All right, this Sunday, Super Bowl commercials, 70 of them will hit your screen at home. Brands beginning to unveil some of those commercials. And as I was talking with my team this morning, we were thinking back to some of the most memorable. And here's the one that came to mind for me. Trouble getting into your jeans? <coughs> Try Relax Fit Jeans from Lee. Wow, that's a flashback from 1993. Isn't it funny? Of all the commercials, that's the one. I was like, it's the Tweety Bird one, right? Well, there you go. Lee Jeans, 1993. And companies like Michelob Ultra this year, they're hoping to recoup the money that they spent on their promo featuring Lionel Messi by releasing it before football's biggest night. The going rate for a 30-second spot, $7 million. $500 million in ad revenue is generated during one Super Bowl night. I mean, wowzers. The most expensive spot of all time is a tie between Amazon and Google. This was 2020. The commercials were 90 seconds long. Both companies paid $16.8 million for these ads. And in 2009, Miller High Life went viral for dropping one second commercials. They paid a 100, about $100,000 each for each second. Here now to talk more about Super Bowl ads, the money spent, uh, the profits made, online advertising expert and founder and president of No Advertising. Uh, this is crazy. Rick Van House, thank you for your time this morning. You You're know, right. Good we, morning. We've all got our favorites. Um, you do this for a living. What makes a good Super Bowl ad? Yeah, I mean, th there's really two ways to go. One is doing something brilliant that kind of pulls on the uh, emotions of the viewers, or it's doing something crazy that's never been done before. I think those are kind of the two lines that, that people take. Uh, and, you know, sometimes they're a hit and sometimes they're not. Uh, right. It's a lot of money to uh, invest here. Hits and misses. You've seen the friend stars. Uh, this one has already been kind of released as a preview. I'm curious, when did Super Bowl ads become such a big deal? Like, what was the turning point that the ads almost became bigger than the games themselves? Yeah, I think in the uh, early 80s, around 84, uh, when Apple released uh, the Macintosh on a Super Bowl commercial, that was huge. Um, and I think what's interesting this year is that this is a star-studded affair. Um, I can't remember seeing this many celebrities jammed into these spots. I mean, if you look at what Bud Light's doing, they've got everybody in their spot. Mick Ultra with, with Messi. Um, and even Uber Eats with Jennifer Aniston. Uh, I mean, it's unreal how many stars are in these spots this year. Right. And speaking of stars, I mean, Taylor Swift and Travis Kelsey are the story of this Super Bowl, really the love story of the Super Bowl. Do you think that that storyline will show up anywhere in an ad? Do you have any sense on that? Uh, I don't think they need to put it in an ad. <laughs> I think the thing lives on its own, right? I mean, I've got a 10-year-old daughter, never watched the Super Bowl with this much interest before, and it's just because of Taylor. Is Taylor there? Is she going to be there? Are they going to meet on the field? Uh, is he going to propose, right? That's the big rumor. Oh. They don't even need to run an ad. It's built in. So I think you're going to see one of the biggest audiences uh, in history on Sunday. Right. I mean, they are the ad. You're right about that. What's the return on investment? I'm curious, Rick, for companies who invest all this money in these ads. Does it pay off in the end for their bottom line? I mean, if you look at somebody like uh, uh, Anheuser-Busch that's spending $100 million a year on advertising, so they drop seven on one spot one time a year, although they have a number of different products out there. Um, you know, you, you, you got to just take a swing. I mean, it's big money, but these are big companies that can handle the budget. Uh, and you're going to see the return if, if Bud Light can become number one again in 2024 and take over Modelo. That's how you see the ROI. So, you know, there's no magic bullet in advertising. It's all a crapshoot, but you got to have the strong people behind it uh, from a strong agency. Yeah, success measured in the days after as to how many people are talking about it, how many people are sharing that ad. Do you have a favorite from history? I showed the Tweety Bird Lee Jeans one from 1993. What stands out to you is um, creme de la creme here. Yeah, I mean, well, I kind of mentioned it a little bit with uh, the Macintosh release in 1984. Yeah. It was kind of us all as zombies uh, 
and Macintosh was kind of breaking the mold and letting you uh, have creativity through a different kind of computer for the first time. Um, that's just one that that never uh, kind of uh, gets forgotten in the in the decades of ads that have been going on for me. Yeah, iconic. Well, it's going to be fun to watch whether you're in it for the game, you're in it for the ads, or you want to see Taylor up in the box. Um, it's going to be one to watch this year. Rick Van House with no advertising. Thanks, sir. Nice to talk to you. Thank you. <laughs> Great weekend. You too.